All right, Algebra 1B students, uh, welcome to part one of section 7.5. We're going to continue our discussion from class today about rational exponents and radicals uh, and how we can relate them to each other. So we're going to jump right in. should be a pretty quick video. We're going to be on page 448, a little bit on page 449. Uh, starting with the paragraph under essential understanding on page 448. Uh, I just want to remind you what we know about square roots. So hopefully we remember from our activity today that the square root of 25 is 5. And we also know that 25 to the 1 half power is 5. Right? We saw that kind of thing a lot in our activity today, right? Square roots are the same as to the 1 half power. So <clears throat> square root of 25 is 5, and we know that 25 to the 1 half power is 5. So we know the square root of 25 is the same as 25 to the 1 half power. Uh, in the same way, number 11 in your activity told you this. Uh, no, not number 11. Number 6 told you that. That the cube root of a number is the same as that number to the 1 third power. Right? So cube root of 8 equals 8 to the one-third. So we are going to simplify radical expressions by finding <clears throat> like factors just like when we simplify powers with rational exponents. Okay? So we're going to be doing problems like, uh, like this. Like the cube root of 8, or the square root of 25, or the fourth root, or the fifth root, or something else like that. So a quick vocabulary thing. This number here that tells you what root you are taking is called the index. Right? So it could be a 3. This is a 3. It could be a 3. It could be a 4. For example, the fourth root of 16. Uh, the fifth root of 32. Anything like that. These are all called the index. That number there. Right? Now, what that number tells us is we are looking for a number that, in this case, if we multiply it times itself three times, it should equal 27. All right? So we're looking for a number, and if we times it by itself three times, we get 27. All right? Here's a couple other examples that I will show you. Then I'll have you do a few yourself, all right? <clears throat> In letter A here of problem 1, which you'll find on the bottom of page 448. In letter A, we are asked to find the third root of 125. That is, we're looking for a number that if we multiply itself uh, three times, we get 125. So we sort of have to think backwards and think, okay, what number could I try? I could try 2 times 2 times 2. I don't think that's going to get me high enough. I could try 10 times 10 times 10. I think that's going to get me too high. Uh, so hopefully we can think and come up with 5 times 5 times 5. Right? 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 again equals 125. So if we list out three fives and it, multiply them all together, we get 125. What that means is that the third root of 125 equals 5. Right? Uh, we also saw this when we did rational exponents. Right? Remember that earlier on in chapter 7 we looked at rational exponents? So we looked at, in this case, 16 to the 1 fourth power. Remember that the 1 fourth meant we were looking for a number that we can list out four times and multiply it together and uh, get 16, since we're taking 16 to the 1 fourth power. Now we know, based on our activity, that 16 to the 1 fourth power is the same as the fourth root of 16. Right? So now the 4 is in the index, telling us we want a number that we can list out four times and multiply together to get 16. So hopefully, uh, doing some, maybe some guessing, some checking, and some thinking critically, we can find that 2 is that number. If we take 2 times 2, that's 4. 
uh, times 2 again, that's 8. Times 2 again, that's 16. So four twos all multiplied together is 16. What that means is the fourth root of 16 equals 2. So there we are. The fourth root of 16 equals 2. In the same way that the third root of 125 equals 5. Okay? If you don't understand either of those two examples, please make a note to ask me uh, that in class tomorrow. All right? Now, on the uh, top of page 449, you will see four problems there uh, that you're asked to find the simplified form of. Just as a uh, reinforcement of what we're talking about here, I want to be clear that letter A, which says the third root of 27, that is the same as 27 to the one-third power. Okay? The same thing in letter B, which says the fifth root of 32, that is the same as uh, 32 to the one-fifth power. Part C says the third root of 64. Part C, third root of 64, that's the same as 64 to the one-third power. And then part D says the square root of 36, the second root, which we know is the same as 36 to the one-half power. All right? Now, uh, I want you to find for me what each one of those is, what it equals. Uh, I can help you with the first one, and then uh, you can do the other three. So, in letter A, we're looking for a number that if we multiply it times itself three times, we get 27. So if I try 2 times 2 times 2, I get 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Not good enough. If I try 3, I get 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is, hey, 27. Good. So, the third root of 27, believe it or not, is 3. And we're done. Now, your job is to find in part B a number that if you list it out 5 times and multiply it again, you get 32. In part C, I want you to find a number that if you list it out 3 times and multiply it again, you get 64. And in part D, a number you just have to list twice, multiply together and get 36. All right, so find B, C, and D. If you cannot figure those uh, out, please make a note to ask me about one of them in class tomorrow. Okay? Once you've mastered those three, that is it for this video. Shortest video of all time. Uh, so once you've mastered those three, you are ready for your practice problem set uh, tomorrow which is some of this and then some review of what we've done earlier in chapter 7 to keep that fresh uh, in your minds. So take a look at these three problems, B, C, and D. Again, these are on the top of page 449. And when you've mastered those, you are ready for your practice problem set. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a wonderful night.